In today's episode, we will be showing you, 5 famous Nigerians who are locked up in foreign prisons. These are men, who with their wealth, power and influence, might have been working about free if their crimes were committed in Nigeria. Number 1, is the former Nigerian Deputy Senate President. I.K. Ekwu Raymadu, I mean there was a time this guy was like the fourth most powerful man in Nigeria. His words were law, but today sadly he chills in jail, alongside his beloved wife, over conspiracy to traffic human organ. He was handed a lengthy sentence of nine years indeed, life is unpredictable. The powerful politician in desperation to save his dying daughter, who needed a kidney donor, had flown an alleged street kid from Lagos to Britain, in contravention to UK laws. Actually, he could have been a free man today if he had built a better hospital, back home in Nigeria, when he was in power. Really what goes around comes around, the story of the Senate President, is a pathetic one, which proves that power actually blinds. Number 2, Invectus Obi. The once golden child of Nigeria, whose heartbreaking arrest came as a shocker to Nigerians. They was a time this guy was a role model to every legit young hustler. But little did they know that a lot of illegal deals were going on behind the curtains. Invictus Obi, once featured on the cover of the prestigious Forbes magazine, as one of the 30 under 30, young influential billionaires, in the business world. However, the news of Invictus being arrested for $11 million fraud in the United States, as he tried to quickly jet back to Nigeria, came as a rude shock even to his mum. He was given a 10-year sentence, by a district court of Eastern Virginia, USA. His story is just a proof why you should never envy a source of wealth that you don't understand. Keep your hustle and hope alive. Legit money takes time, but it will surely come. Number 3, Hush Puppy. Rahman Abbas, if you claim not to have heard about this Nigerian fraud star, then you haven't walked the streets or campuses of most Nigerian universities. Hush Puppy, flamboyant lifestyle and questionable source of wealth before and even after his downfall, influenced so many into the filthy world of crime. During his glory days he dined with the rich and powerful, and had a lot of pretty ladies. But time will tell that he wasn't so smart after all. He claimed to be into real estates but had no single estates or portfolio, to his claims. His money was spent on luxurious living and he made no concrete investment. He was on the watch list of the Interpol, when he was shockingly trailed and arrested in the Emirates. Presently he is serving a sentence of 11 years in the US. During his sentencing, Judge Otis Wright, also ordered him to pay $1,732,841 in restitution to two fraud victims. Report has it that so far, he has been of good behavior in prison. Washing and cleaning the toilets diligently. Indeed how art the mighty fallen. Number 4. Henry Ocker does the name rings a bell? This guy, is the younger brother of the leader of the dreaded, movement for the emancipation of Niger Delta in the oil-rich region. Henry was living the Nigerian dream. Traveling the world. Freedom fighting had paid off. Until he was arrested, on a trip to South Africa, for his involvement in the 2010 Independent Day bombing. Without joy, he was given a lengthy sentence of 24 years in prison, by a South African court which was based on a 13-count charge bothering on terrorism. Number 5. James Ibori. The former governor of Delta State, has an ugly record of being convicted twice by the UK government. It will shock you, even without electricity, to know that the former governor, was reportedly convicted in 1991 for stealing from a store, where he was working. This is a perfect example of be careful of your actions today, for tomorrow is pregnant. Ibori, who served as governor of Delta State from 1999 to 2007, was arrested in Dubai in 2010 and extradited to the UK to face his charges. A UK court convicted him, after shamefully doing his time, he was released in 2016. Shockingly, his return to Nigeria from the UK prison, was like a triumphant entry, as thousands trooped out to welcome him. To some, he was being witch-hunt by his political enemies.
What do you think of the criminal justice system in Nigeria? Do you think if this guys with all their wealth and political connections had committed these crimes in Nigeria, could justice have taken its course? Kindly drop your comments let's know your thoughts. Thanks for watching this episode. Please if you haven't subscribed to this amazing channel, just hit the subscribe tab.